I started uh, to ride a bike, to race a bike, when I was 12 years old. That was 1962. And I rode the road, I rode the track, I rode my first cyclocross race in 1964. When I was 14, I started working in a bike shop. And when I was a teenager uh, in high school, 1967, some friends of mine said, hey, we take these old bikes, balloon tire bikes, and we ride them down Mount Tamalpais. And I went out with these guys, my friends, and it was a situation where maybe six guys would go out, and by the end of the ride, three of them would be dragging their bikes behind them. It would be a lot of fun, but I didn't do anything, no development at that time. I wanted to be a road racer. And I started road racing really seriously. But then in uh, 1974, I met my roommate, Charlie Kelly. And we were both into the rock and roll scene. Uh, he was a roadie for a band called the Sons of Champlin. And I used to work for the Grateful Dead and the Jefferson Airplane. So my friends in the uh, rock and roll world said, hey, you got to meet this guy, Charlie. He's tall like you. He rides an orange Colnago, just like you. I said, OK. And I met Charlie. And we became really close friends right away. And I moved into a, an apartment, shared an apartment with Charlie. So I had an old bike I brought into the apartment. And Charlie said, what is that? And I said, well, this is what you do with it. You go out in the woods. And at the time, I thought, well, it's time to put some improvements in this bike. And I was working in a bike shop. And uh, I put gears on the bike, wide range gears. And I also put uh, really powerful brakes on the bike. And um, well, actually, I was at that time, I started working for Bicycling Magazine as a road tester. So I made this bike uh, in September of 1974. And uh, I made one for myself. I made one for Charlie. I made one for one of his friends, and then another guy, and another guy, and another guy. And I thought at that moment that this sport was too hard for the average person, too much work, too physical. And I was wrong. And so it grew like that, but at first very slowly. Um, so I was still a road racer and my goal was to ride in the Olympics, to ride on a national team. And I got very close to that goal. I actually, uh, in 1979, I was in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center. I was on the long team for a road race in Moscow. But then our president, Jimmy Carter, said, we're not going to Moscow. We're going to boycott the Olympics. And at that moment, I said, I'm going to start the bike company. So I started a company named Mountain Bikes with my roommate, Charlie Kelly. We put together some money that we had. $600. And our bikes were really expensive. We had, uh, you know, some really good frame builders. The best one, the frame builder that was the best was Tom Ritchie because he could produce a lot of bikes really fast, a lot of frames. So Ritchie, would, I, I would drive the tubing down to Ritchie's place and he had two guys that would cut the tubing, tack the frames. And Tom would do one thing. He would fillet braze the friends. And how much were the bikes? Well, the bike at the time was thirteen hundred and twenty dollars. Wow! And remember, at that time, you could buy a full Campagnolo Colnago for four hundred and fifty dollars. You could buy a full Campagnolo Custom Ben Serona for nine ninety-five. And we would say to people, "Well, you don't want a cheap parachute, do you?" <laughs> so, in the first year, we sold one hundred and sixty bikes. In the second year, we sold just under a thousand. They're all handmade and uh, right there in California, and they were they were very expensive. So I would take the tubing to Tom Ritchie, who would uh, brace together a raw frame. Then I would take the frame. I had three frame painters. 
I had seven people building wheels. I would import all the parts. We did all the assembly. We did all the marketing. We did all the sales, all the collections, all the finance. So it wasn't, Tom Ritchie was a subcontractor. He was not a part of our business. He had no idea what we were doing, but we were paying him a lot of money. He liked that a lot. So I, I had a family background too. My grandfather, he worked in Hollywood. He worked for Hal B. Wallace as a publicist. He was the seminal Hollywood publicist. He also worked for Warner Brothers for 40 years. And he taught me how to make publicity. So this was a big part of it, because I think to make a craze, you got to have a, a great design, a lot of publicity, and then, then you got to deliver the product. And the next year, or in 1981, at the bequest of Bicycling Magazine, Charlie and I did a, a presentation at the New York Bike Show. And it was a really incredible presentation. We had been working on this presentation, and it's really crazy. It's like the guys, there were two people that took the photos for five years previous to that, Wendy and Larry Craig. It's a funny thing, Larry Craig, he used to steal guitars for Neil Young, still is, funny. And then we had another guy in the clunker group, Howie Hammerman. He was George Lucas's third employee. So we had the run of George Lucas's screening room in his house. And we would do slideshows there all the time. We practice, practice, practice. And we did this show in New York and we killed them. So at this presentation in New York City were all the big wigs from the industry. The Shimano brothers were there. You know, Junzo Kawai, the president of Suntour was there. You know, Antonio Colombo, you know, from uh, Columbus Tubin and Cinelli, he was there. They are all there. And uh, it's really funny. I got introduced to Antonio Colombo by the head guy who sold the uh, advertising for Bicycle Magazine. And he introduced me and said, Antonio, this guy sells more bikes over $1,000 than anybody in the United States. And I went, I do? Wow. <laughs> so then the Japanese would come start visiting me. And then I thought, I'm going to Japan. I went to Chinatown in San Francisco. You can buy a plane ticket there really easily, really cheap. And I get I call up the guys in Japan. It's very expensive to make a phone call there and say, I'm coming. So I worked with, I'd come to Japan and I'd show them everything. I'd say, look, I'm going to show you everything, how to make these parts. And you're going to give me first delivery, best prices, terms.